All right, let's get this. It ain't gonna record it sideways, is it? Okay. All right. So yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. January 1st, 2024. The start of the new year. <laughs> Fucking. Yeah, I, I gotta mention this. A 7.5, 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck Japan uh, today. Or, yeah, today. A 7.5 magnitude earthquake struck Japan. Yeah. Starting off with some tragic news. But I fear things are going to get more tragic as, as the year progresses on. Alright, so yeah, Star Sirius right there. Yeah, that's the Star Sirius, the bright star in our night sky, but yeah. The moon finally came out. You probably, I don't know if you could see it, but... But yeah. Days are getting longer, and, and tomorrow the sun will rise in Karuna, Sweden, but yeah, back to Japan, uh, yeah, it just, it just takes me back to the, to the, to the day I went to Japan, and, uh, I was at the hotel, and, well, I didn't record the earthquake as it was happening, I did feel it as it was, it was like a magnitude 5 earthquake, which is nothing compared to the earthquake that happened in Japan as of recently. But there's like a tsunami warning going on in effect. Waves expected to breach up to like 1.2 meters high, which is pretty fucking scary. Yeah. It is. So people are advised to like, if they live on like the center, I'm trying to remember with the prefecture, but I know it's in the center of Japan and people are advised to evacuate that prefecture while a lot of other parts of Japan have a tsunami warning. And yeah, like, cause you know, if it, if it were destructuring where the sea is, you know, of course it's going to cause some tsunamis and yeah the the footage is pretty scary but yeah if you remember in 2011 Japan had this magnitude 9 earthquake that struck off the coast to the east of Japan and yeah that if you've seen the flood waters there you would know how brutal that was it was one of the hardest years for Japan to ever ever in history so yeah, one of the hardest years in Japan to ever go through in history. But you know, 2024, if a war breaks out, it'll be the hardest year for, you know, every, everyone. So yeah. thing is, yeah, <laughs> came off with the image of, oh yeah, when you're in Gaza celebrating the new year, yeah, I can tell how it feels being constantly bombarded in Gaza, can't even, Malaysia themselves, like, decided to just cancel the new year celebration and politics and in solidarity with Palestine got tongue-tied, yeah, but yeah, you know, it was raining earlier, you know, a couple hours ago it was actually raining, but yeah, people were setting off some fireworks, but you know, it was raining, and believe me, it was definitely like, it was raining quite a bit, yeah, you can see, you can tell, it has rained here with the uh, with the, with the ground reflecting, because yeah, it's like one degree out, and yeah, hopefully my hands don't freeze, but,
but yeah, you can see. It's like New Year's Day. And Biden said, uh, and yeah, Biden was stating to start another war with Russia. Yeah, another war. Yeah, war with Russia. Telling, telling Putin he has one month to comply to whatever. From what I can tell. But yeah, this is going to get... This is going to... This is probably going to be really nasty. How it's going to go. Like, yeah. Probably like... So 2024, people are expecting a full-scale war to what happened this year. Like, people are... Ex sorry, I sound, sorry, I sound a bit tired. I am tired. I am tired. I'm kind of weak. Kind of speaking a bit more slowly, but... Trying to trying to trying to know what I'm trying to say, but but yeah, it's probably like a full-scale war going to break out, and yeah, they didn't really put up much Christmas decorations in this neighborhood, but yeah, I mean, January 1st is going to be the last last day for all those Christmas lights and stuff like that so yeah yeah my father is going to like put the Christmas lights away either today tomorrow or the day after I don't know I don't know when but but when December ends we just put the decorations away and yeah what we do some people will keep them up longer but it's fuck okay but yeah yeah it is you know like for some reason, when it started raining, for some reason it got warmer, for some reason. Yeah, okay, like, I don't see it rain that much in December, but yeah, it was actually raining this time. Usually, you know, it's an El Nino year, so it's kind of, I'm not too surprised, so. Then again, I have seen rain in December. In 2015, I recorded that. When I was going home from social engineering institution, I like to call it that. Because that's what school is. Um, social engineering institution. I call it that. Because you could get waged psychological warfare there. And teaching children the woke shit. I can't really say too much about that, but... I'm gonna get some important stuff out of the way. Okay. So 2024 might be a very, very monumental year. It might be. It might be the year that we would all die. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't, sometimes I pause because I see some ice, I don't want to slip on it, but yeah, you can tell, but yeah, 1924, okay, 1924 was over 
100 years ago now. Well, yeah. Well, the first day is 100 years ago, 1924. How many people do you do you know that's uh how many people in real life do you know that's actually born before that, huh? Not very much. I can tell you not very much. All right. How many people know your great grandfather, your great grandmother, your great grandparents? How many of you guys remember them? Cuz I can tell you not much. I can tell you not much. Yeah, this this neighborhood's pretty interesting. Got like three-story houses right there, except the basement's like completely above ground, and it's not really a basement. Some houses around this neighborhood even have like four floors. And yeah. I often wonder, like, is it, would I find a house with five floors? Yeah, probably. Probably. So, yeah, like... Like, most of most of you guys watching this, um... If... Are your, your great-grandparents are most likely dead by the time you're watching this, unless you're really, really, really young. But again, Christian Weston Chandler, that guy, you know, his, you know, all of his grandparents died before he was born, by the way, you know? Yeah, you know, had a child, Christian Weston Chandler, was born 1982 and his parents were like over 40. Some were expecting Barbara Chandler to die this year, but yeah, you know, Bob Chandler died 2011. So yeah. But yeah. But yeah. How many people do you, how many, how many of you guys do remember your great grandparents? Because I don't really think a lot of you do remember your great grandparents. I bet none of you remember your great great-grandparents because that's probably like much too long ago you know because you know like my great-grandmother like died in one of my great-grandmothers died in 2011 you know I'm sure there's no great-grandparents alive today you know I'm sure none of my great-grandparents are alive today because yeah I'm like So yeah, like and now you have to go like a hundred years from now, assuming the world hasn't been destroyed yet. All right, you know, average life expectancy is like seventy-seven years. Some people die before the life expectancy. Some people die long after that. By the time you reach that age, you know, people very risk such diseases that destroy them, Alzheimer's and ALS and all the other stuff. So yeah, it's, it is like, some die of natural causes, die of old age, lucky enough to just die in their sleep and die peacefully. Others are not so lucky. Get, get horrible diseases like Alzheimer's and stuff like that. But yeah, the houses that you live in, you know, 100 years from now, it's going to be moved in by someone else or it might not be there anymore. All your personal belongings would either be held on for hundreds of years or just be thrown out. Because you're not going to remember, you're not going to remember your great grandkids that much. Well, I mean, you're going to remember the. I'm not saying you're not going to remember your great-great-grandkids. I mean, that's what I meant to say. You're not going to remember people who are born like 100 years from now. Because um, by the time you're most likely going to be dead by the time that happens. Yeah. 
Some people claim, have longevity claims. Like that one man in China who claimed to be like 256 years old. They claim he was 256. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I am convinced many of these longevity claims are real. I mean, that's what the biblical figures are. They're like, wow, you can hear the train all the way from there. Holy shit. But yeah, some people may have lived really long lives may actually get to see their great great grandchildren but yeah some people die very young some people die before they were even born because they have like miscarriages and stuff like that you know when they get a miscarriage it's very very tragic So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, hundred years from now, like I can tell things are going to be a lot different a hundred years from now. I mean, it was a lot different a hundred years ago. <laughs> I know our history has been wrong, but a hundred years ago, I mean, I can probably put the place uh, that long ago. But things before 100 years ago are just harder, harder to, to know the true story of. Because people have been waging psychological warfare on us for so long. The adversaries have been waging psychological warfare on us. But yeah. They say you die twice. Once when you like pass away and another when they say your name for the last time. Well apparently there's, you die three times. And the third is all the evidence of your existence is completely erased, completely doomed to obscure. Yeah, I know the Solar Sands video. I even know the game he mentioned, Tiny Defense. Yeah, never heard of Tiny Defense until Solar Sands mentioned it. But, but yeah, you know, it has this, has this kind of cult following, I guess. Get to see a lot of fan art for it. Like you do with a, like you do with a, with a game I know damn fucking well. Uh, Sanaro Oshiete, for example, that game. was a failure when it was released but became a cult a cult kind of game later on a lot of people absolutely loved it and found a new appreciation for it kind of like you know films like fight club that like that you know but yeah so yeah Things get doomed to obscurity later on, but yeah, people a hundred years from now aren't going to remember you, um, unless you do live a hundred years later, of course, but, you know, at this time, at this age, you know, I would be like 124, hundred years from now, and yeah, I'd most likely be dead at that point, but if I were to live that long, that, that would be quite amazing, you know, it would absolutely be quite amazing if I were to actually live that long but you know can't live forever you know and that's the thing uh, nobody lives forever and nobody is going to live forever you will that we will all eventually die someday everybody you know and love is going to die one day the things we worry about now may not be such a big deal later on things will seem petty in the long run i mean if if you're going to be confronted with total bombardment of 
say, like, nuclear war, then yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna go that way, because there's a bridge right over there, you know? But yeah. I was chatting with people about 2024. People are gonna say, it's gonna be even harder than 2023. And people really say that there's gonna be like, a full scale like, nuclear war to happen that to happen that year I mean it's not 100% likely but many people really are expecting that people really are expecting like a full on scale war and stuff like that but yeah if it were the case, I mean, people a hundred years, like, seriously, World War One is like a hundred years ago. I mean, the last World War One veteran to ever live said some pretty interesting things. I can't remember. Fuck. But it, it is, but probably look up the quote of the last World War One veteran. I mean... I mean, when my father was a child, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, you, my, my parents, when they were a child, like, they get to meet them at the, they were, they, you know, it, these World War One veterans were still well alive when my parents were a child, you know, I mean, yeah, the last World War One veteran was alive when I was a child, but he died in 2009, he died in 2009, I know, he, I know, some, I don't always remember everything, but, it, but whatever he said has something to do with how, how the elite has been manipulating people on fighting for their side for, for false pretenses and stuff like that. World War II veterans are still alive. But they're dying out too, I mean, like, one World War II veteran was shocked on the state of America and like, he was very, very hard pressed to find America being the shithole that it is now. And he wondered which side he fought for, you know? He was really questioning the intentions of America, was like, what, what was I fighting for? You know, you could fight, you fight in D-Day, you know? fight tooth and nail against the enemy and then like 50 years later they tell you oh you can't vote no 70 years later they tell you you can't vote you can't vote at all or something like you're telling them how how evil they are you they fought for your country and you're gonna drag them in the dirt like that you're gonna seriously drag them in the dirt like, are you absolutely out of your fucking mind? Yeah, they get treated like shit. Our veterans have been treated like shit. Yeah, they fought tooth and nail against the enemy, and the and the state treats them like shit. The state. Yeah, history is always written by the victor, but have more respect for your veterans. Damn you. They fought hard for your fucking country, and you treat them like shit. Check them like, like seriously, stop. And then like 20 years from now, you're gonna, the last World War II veterans are gonna eventually die off 20 years from now. Just like how the last World War I veteran died in 2009. So yeah. But yeah, have some respect for your veterans. If you thought, 
Yeah, if this trend continues, like, and then those who fought in the Vietnam War, when they become at an old age, like, just imagine how much of a living hell that's going to be for them. Like, seriously. Okay, I see a red fucking cloud thing right there. I don't know. But, yeah. Have more respect for your veterans. Have more respect for them. Like, if you can't, like, have, you have to imagine how... The, the risk they took just to fight for your country. <sighs> like, seriously. Like, ever seen Johnny Got His Gun, right? You know that film? You know the guy with, with no limbs, no eyes, can't speak, can't hear? That film? Well, apparently, that's a reality for many people. And, and yeah, who fought in that military for this? Yeah, imagine the living hell they're going through. And they really question... Who they fought for, like seriously, risking that and then being treated like shit when you risk something as horrendously painful as that. Like, fuck, man. Like, that is just cruel. That is just absolutely, extremely, absurdly cruel. But yeah, the global elites have no principles they're they're beyond beyond evil they're unfathomably astronomically evil so yeah i think i have enough to say for now i don't really have anything more to say but i really want to get this off my chest so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna see you later this is probably the last day i can do this for a while so yeah walk around and there's not gonna be any more christmas lights put up so so yeah, it's gonna be kind of more boring, so it's gonna be a pain to walk out if it's like really cold out, so yeah. Oh yeah, and if I were to do, if I, if I was in Puerto Vallarta and recording this, it's probably gonna be off some street or something. I don't know if I could, I don't know, it's probably more dangerous, I don't know, or more, I don't know. I mean, Canada's getting more dangerous, but... Yeah, that's the moon right there. But, yeah, I would do that in the Malacon, but there is that toy that played that song that I just don't fucking like at all, you know? And I don't want to ever want to fucking hear that song again. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to let you off right here.